Professor Kwapong was the first substantive Ghanaian Vice Chancellor of the University of Ghana and first African Vice Rector of a United Nations University. He believed strongly that science, innovation and technology remain the most effective means of reducing poverty on the African continent. Five years after his death, the Nature Speaks lecture series has been inaugurated in his honor. In his latter years, one of his remain his un unending passions was the importance of um, capacity building in Africa. Global growth in the in the in the developed markets is is slowing, and they're starting to look at Africa as that next frontier. And when that time comes, it's important that we're all ready to engage as equal partners in the opportunities that may come. Professor Alexander Idumkwapong had so much love for Africa and believed that the continent has a key to the future. Kwapong in, um, in his memoirs, and I quote, Where will Africa be in this unfolding multipolar world? Meeting the challenges of capacity building and human resource development in Africa holds the key to the future. I believe all of us around this table share the conviction that provided Africa gives, not only in theory, but in practice, the highest priority to meeting the challenges of rebuilding its human, institutional, and technical capacity base, and in effectively mobilizing and utilizing its skilled human resource endowment. Surely, the best resource endowment of any people, the development future of Africa is not foreclosed. End of quote. After a year sabbatical leave at Princeton, as a visiting professor, he was appointed Pro Vice Chancellor to assist Dr. Cruz Connor O'Brien, who was then the Vice Chancellor. Three years later, at the age of 39, he was appointed the first substantive Ghanaian Vice Chancellor to head Ghana's premier university in 1966. Guest speaker Dr. Franny Lottier wants more investment in health and education with a focus on private sector as a means to develop Africa. When people talk about Africa, what do they see? It's resources. 57% of the export earnings of African economies come from hydrocarbons. So this is fantastic today. But imagine a world that switches away from fossil fuels, it means that becomes a stranded asset. The second thing people see when they look at Africa is as an investment opportunity. We have at the moment, uh, in the last decade or so, uh, when you look at it since the 1970s, you see a huge flow, but that's about 1.6 trillion US dollars have flowed into Africa as foreign direct investment. So the question, this is a five-fold increase compared to the 1970s, so there's a huge interest in Africa. And the question is, where is it going? It's going towards the digital economy, particularly in the financial sector through fintech, mobile payment systems, and all the drivers of innovation in finance. But very little of it has gone to health and education, which again, when you take care of the human, that's the future and we haven't seen enough of the investment going there. Discussions were unanimous in their call and advocacy for technology to be leveraged in the areas of sanitation and dealing with illegal mining. If we say that illegal small-scale mining is mortgaging our lands, then poor sanitation, which kills at least 65,000 children a year, is actually mortgaging our future. Because the future and the main asset of Africa is its children. And if we are killing them off for no reason, then we are making a big mistake. Meanwhile, stakeholders are advocating partnerships to leverage science, technology and research to promote Africa. It is my sincere hope that the deliberation here will contribute significantly towards a new development paradigm which positions science, innovation, and technology as the fulcrum around which Ghana's, and indeed, Africa's development evolves. The University of Ghana and INRA therefore have a unique and important responsibility in identifying challenges for research and in promoting 
scientific institutional frameworks to deliver technology solutions for sustainable management of natural resources and inclusive growth in Africa. Participants were excited and shared their views about the lecture. Our guest speaker provided us with fantastic submissions that I am personally I am going to take back and use in my work. I came to this lecture actually because of Professor Kapong and it was in line with his excellence, what he stood for. Um, it's a good event to the memory of the first black vice chancellor of this university and it's something that we are very grateful for. It's about time that we focus on um, our natural resources in Ghana because nature actually does speak.